Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back inside Wrestling Paradox Podcast. Tonight is a very special night. Before we get into all that, man, it is good to see you back, Chris. Glad to have you back on the other side of this thing. Oh, it's glad to be back. Only the past yes, couple of weeks have been pretty rough, so. All right, well, we're like back, great. and that's that's all that counts, man. So, uh, I mean, let's jump right into this because our guest is ready to go. Um, first things first, m j Ecological, sponsoring the show, 305-697-2258. Make sure you reach out to Marcus for any of your uh, issues that you got going on with uh, any reptiles, uh, any lizards in the house that you don't want, anything like that, man. Call Marcus. He'll take care of everything for you. Uh, make sure you guys reach out to CCW South Florida. Follow them on Twitter at CCWFL if you want to become a professional wrestler in the South Florida area. Anywhere in Florida, if you... If you want to be a wrestler, the only place to be in South is in Florida, and South Florida is a place to be with CCW. So make sure you guys reach out to them. Um, all right, so this is the time, Chris. Are you ready? I'm ready to get magn- magnified because we have a we have a very magnificent guest. Uh, you know what? Shut up already! <laughs> you talk too much and you say too little. First of all, I'm a little upset. You're going to introduce a bug company before me. So I don't care if it's your sponsor or not. The guy kills bugs for a living. Holy crap. You're going to introduce that before me. Secondly, you're going to talk about CCW, my home company, the company that I helped build, the company that I have brought champions into, the company that I was a champion of before you mentioned me. You can't talk about that company without talking about me. I am CCW. So you need to figure out your priorities and restart this interview the right way or I'll hang up right now. Yes, sir. Um, all right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one way to introduce this man. It doesn't matter about anything else I've already said. Uh, he believes in himself more than you believe in you. And that's why he's the most magnificent man in wrestling. He is the knockout champion. He is the voice of CCW. Ladies and gentlemen, the magnificent Johnny Walker. Is that better? You, you kind of said it all right. I'll take it because the check that you sent me to do this podcast cleared. So oh, let's get God. on with this. Right. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> Chris, uh, do you want to start, please? Yes. So, Johnny, what does winning the knockout wrestling world title mean to you? Absolutely nothing at all. And let me explain to you why. That title means nothing to me. It wasn't about the title. It was about putting the owner of knockout wrestling, Nicholas Vick, in his place. You see, I took his company. And then I took the only other thing that really mattered to him, which was that title that he put on that paper champion vertigo. See, I'll wipe my butt with the title and throw it in the trash. I don't care. What was important to me was taking it away from Nicholas Vick and showing him that there's nothing that he owns, nothing that he has that I can't take from him anytime I want. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, the one question that everybody's been asking that I need answers to is, why did you agree to this Survivor Series match at Battlefield 1? You could could lose the company, so why would you put that on the line? What risk is there? Let's get honest here. Let's get, you know, the Magnificent Mayhem, my team, myself as the leader of this team, right then and there, that's a victory. I don't need anybody else. But just to play safe... I bring in Bill Crude, a man who's been wrestling before you were even born, before you were even a glint in your daddy's eye. This man knows more about professional wrestling. This man knows more about how to win than any other man in the business. I'm bringing in Rico Moon. You want to talk about a guy who understands what it takes to win and will do anything to do it. And on top of that, our female, Persia Pierce. This girl is damaged incarnate. She will rip through anyone that gets in her way. And what are we up against? You're talking about four professionally trained professional wrestlers who are the very best at what they do. And what are we up against? We're up against, number one, a fat, out of shape, lazy owner Mm -hmm. who's been a mark his whole life and knows nothing about how to wrestle. Never taken a bump, never taken a hit, never gotten even gotten in the ring professionally. Got a lucky punch in on me at the contract signing and then had everybody pull him off and run away. His personal bodyguard, whatever you want to call him, Johnny Zeke, game day Johnny Zeke. The only thing gamey about Johnny is the way he smells. 
<laughs> the kid weighs like 300 pounds so i'm not real sure exactly what professional athlete he thinks he is maybe sumo wrestler but it sure isn't any professional sport i want to be a part of you know then they got their their uh their lake county guy billy mcleod you know the king of extreme or whatever he wants to call himself my left leg weighs more than billy mcleod does this kid if a strong breeze blows he's gonna fly away and they're bringing in what? Oh, the high school principal because the principal is putting up the high school. If we win, I get to be the principal of the school too. Have you seen this guy? He's about <laughs> five foot nothing and a half, 130 pounds soaking wet, and he's an academic. He looks like the kind of guy that if anybody even looks at him sideways, he's going to run across the street. He didn't get within 10 feet of me at the contract signing because he didn't know what to do with me. Oh, and I just found out their female competitor, the knockout women's champion, at least for the moment, Eliza Hayes, the flower child. I think she's been smoking her flowers more than growing them. This broad has about as much chance of beating Persia Pierce as an ant has of beating an elephant, okay? So what am I risking? Zero. Nothing. Why not put it on the line? Because you know what? Finally, I'm going to get to put Nick out for good. When I win this thing, when my team takes this thing home, he's gone. He has to sign over the remainder of the company to me. He's out. Zeke is fired. McLeod is fired. Eliza, I'll get the title off of her the very next week and just give it to Pierce. I mean, I'll let Pierce just beat her up in the parking lot, and we'll just take that title. That'll be the end of that. And I get to run Leesburg High School for the rest of the year. So tell me this isn't a win-win for the Magnificent Mayhem. This sounds like a win-win on all sides. I am taking that to Vegas, and I'm putting all my money on Johnny Walker and friends. February 6th, Leesburg High School, Knockouts Battlefield Live 1. This is it. This is the changing of the guard. The company's mine. Nick's out. This whole beef between me and him is going to be squashed, and it's said and done. I can't lose. Oh. we well, got, that's the show. We're done. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, got, we got that out of the way, so now we got to talk about the South Florida Company, and that's CCW, and – Johnny, I have to ask you, where do you see yourself in the rankings in CCW? You're going to ask me that kind of a stupid, where do I see myself? Where do you think I see myself? I'm number one, baby. I've been number one. I've been in that company many years now. I've seen them come. I've seen them go. And you know what? Nobody's been able to beat me. You know, you're oh, okay. All right, you're going to bring up Cha Cha Charlie and this little rivalry that he and I have had for, you know, five or six or a hundred years now. I don't even know how long it's been. And we go back and forth and whatever. And he's got these wins and those wins and whatever else. But Cha Cha has always had something in his corner to save him, something, you know, somebody there, something going on, you know, whatever the case may be, I don't even care. He can dance his ass down to whatever South American company he defected from and jump the border to get here. I don't even know where he's from, nor do I care. All right. I am Coastal Championship Wrestling. Who do the fans come to see? Me. Whether they love me or hate me, and yes, they hate me. And do I care? Because just like your announcing partner there with his redneck hat on and his beard and you two, y'all looking dirty and nasty like you need a good shave and you haven't bathed in 10 years, I could care less about any of these fans. <laughs> I'm in this for the money. I'm in this for my own personal glory. So all of you sycophants can love whoever you want, even if it's that dancing fool. But I am the number one competitor in Coastal Championship Wrestling, and I always have been. I'll take whatever title I want when I want it, I just don't want any of them because they're not worth it. There's nobody there worth beating. Chris? Coming in hot. <laughs> I got I... So I got, I got a question then. Uh, for the past couple of months. I got a question for you. You need to make up your mind. You're wearing a University of Miami hat, but it's got camo on it. You do understand that the University of Miami is in Miami, right? There are no rednecks that live there. You need <laughs> oh, to figure out who you are. Are you a redneck or are you a city boy? Stop being confused. Are you gay oh. or are you straight? Which one is it? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know that there was none of those down there. Oh, my <laughs> Have you ever been to Miami? Yeah. Really? And did mm -hmm. you see other people that look like you? No, because I'm magnificent. Why would I see anybody else that looks like me? Wow. Did you really just take my line? Yeah, I borrowed <laughs> it. Can, I'm going to give it back to you. You can say that in a podcast because I can't reach across the table and smack you. But understand, you will be at a show that I'll be at soon. And whether you're in the audience or in the back, I'll smack you. 
Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, it. that show is February 6th, <laughs> Bash at the Brew. That is the well, next show. I will show not you. be there. I have to be oh, a no. You don't listen knockout. well, do you? Knockout. What did I February say? 6th. February right. 6th, Leesburg, Florida. I am at Knockout Wrestling. Knockout Wrestling. So you already I blew that. You know what? Take Will's shirt off. You don't deserve to wear Will's shirt. Take it off. Get it off. So, Get it off so, right now. I'm not so, kidding. Take it off. So and now that. Take the hat off. Seriously. I can't. I can't. I can't. You're bald under there, aren't you? Yeah. You're bald, aren't you? Yeah. That's why you wear the hat. Because yes. without the hat, you look like you're 80 years old. You're bald, aren't you? 100%. That's, that's exactly why. Yeah, I know. Okay. Let's move on. What was your question that I didn't feel so, like answering because it was dumb? So the past couple of months, we've seen you take Will Austin under your wing. Uh are you and Will still a team now that he's shining as a single star? Listen, you need to get your facts straight. It hasn't been a couple months. I brought Will into Coastal Championship Wrestling. Four years ago, I went out and found that young man. I found what is potentially the greatest talent in professional wrestling today. I saw him. I brought him in. I trained him. I've taught him this business. I've taught him what it, wait makes to, what it takes to win. Yeah, we're still a team. We are still the only undefeated tag team in Coastal Championship Wrestling, the Magnificent Thrill, which, by the way, we keep getting screwed out of our chance to get a title shot for the tag team titles. Whether the fans love Will, whether they hate Will, whether whatever it is, no matter who he is, believe me, Will Austin is my guy. Johnny Walker is Will Austin's guy. We are a team. Singles, together, whatever the case may be, that's never going to change. I'm his number one supporter. I'm his number one fan. I'm the guy who's going to take him further than he's ever gone before. Because I saw in him what nobody else saw, but everybody's seeing it now. And especially after that last match on Saturday, this five, this past Saturday at CCW's homecoming, uh, part two or one, whichever day it was, you know, what you saw that day was the evolution and the future of professional wrestling. Two of the greatest high flyers in the business took each other to the distance. And in the end, we had no victor. What we had were two great guys standing in the middle of the ring. We're going to have to find out in the future which one of them is the better man. Yes, and those two men were Will Austin and Sebastian Cage. And for the record, I did change my shirt. I spent a lot of money on this interview. I am not risking losing it. Um, so, yeah, Will Austin and Sebastian Cage, they tore the house down this past week, and I know you were very proud of Will Austin and his performance. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Chris, where do we go from here, man? Um, I'm nervous uh, to ask the next question. I'm, I, no, I'm no, nervous to ask the question. I'm, I'm scared. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I say something wrong to you. I don't want you upset at me, sir. I'm sorry. Just don't ask stupid questions. No. Okay, no, here so here, I have one. a... I know that's, all right, I know here that's we go. tough for the two of you because, you know, put the both of you together, the IQ is right. like 12, but, you know. All right. So but you're reaching for the stars question. on that one. <laughs> what must one do to be as magne magnificent as you? Win. Win? Win. Simple I enough. Mean, among other things, I've got money. I've got women. I know that you don't, women, that's those things with long hair and big boobs. I know you've never seen one. You've probably never touched any. The opposite sex, you know, those things that wouldn't talk to you in high school. I have lots of those, okay? I have respect from people who I actually want respect from. Your respect doesn't matter to me. The true essence of magnificence is very simple, and you said it at the beginning of the podcast, that I believe in me more than you believe in you. And when that's the case, you are magnificent. That's why I don't see anyone in Miami that looks like me. <laughs> because nobody in Miami wants to look like you. <laughs> First of all, people in Miami can afford haircuts. Second of all, my hair just Miami, falls out, so it's free. Uh, well, that's, you know, then they can afford Rogaine. <laughs> you know, secondly, people in Miami understand that we don't wear a camo hat. What are you on it? That makes mm. no sense. Go be a Florida Gator. That's no. where all the swamp people live. Are you, are you a fan of the Hurricanes, Mr. Walker? I am a fan of any team that can win. And the Miami Hurricanes is a winning team. Over the course of their career, they've won many championships. The, albeit that The Rock came out of the University of Miami, and I'm not a fan of his, but gotcha. his football career lasted all of about 30 seconds. So that goes to show you how good he was at it. Yeah, none of his cousins made it in the NFL. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris, next question, please. So, after a show, where's the party at with Johnny? 
anywhere that you're not. Okay, so I'm going to mark that down. Okay. Yeah, anywhere that you're not. Believe okay. me. Okay. Because anytime I throw a party, if you'd show up, that'd be the end of the party. Because, like, really? Again. I'll bring back. I'll bring, I'll bring Benny Blanco with me. Listen, Benny Blanco, I don't even know where to begin with this kid. Okay. First of all, he's got to learn to shut his mouth. Second of all, he's got to learn to shut his mouth. Third of all, if he doesn't learn to shut his mouth, I'm going to smack him. And it's going to hurt, okay? Benny Blanco has done nothing in this company. He got lucky on Saturday. Jake St. Patrick was a little off his game. It took him a minute to pull out the victory. But in the end, who is Benny Blanco? You know, who, who is Thank this kid? You. He's nobody. He's a joke. He gets in the ring. He gets smacked around. He gets slapped up. You know, we had a battle royal the day before the Sunday battle royal. Benny Blanco was the first guy thrown out. He shot off his big mouth to everybody in the ring. They smacked him around and threw him out like a piece of garbage. Okay. He got lucky on the second day. He was hiding out. He was doing whatever he was doing. He got down to the last few guys. Jake was more concerned about Maywald, which honestly, I would be more concerned about Maywald. Have you seen that guy? Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes 10 of Jake to make up one Maywald. I would have been distracted, too. So, of course, Benny Blanco hangs in there till the end. It took Jake a couple minutes, but he got rid of him. Jake St. Patrick, because every day is St. Patrick's Day, and he proves it all the time in the ring. But Benny Blanco, are you kidding me with this kid? I mean, he's just begging to get beat up every time he sticks his head out his front door. I'm, I'm just glad he got rid of the uh, pink and flamingo-ish uh, wrestling gear that he was wearing. Well, it was definitely making us question his sexuality. But honestly, <laughs> he's always been a little bitch to me anyhow. So what difference does it make? <laughs> um, man, all right. I, now, I guess now, Wait, wait. Now you touched, on, you touched on Jake St. Patrick. Do you see him as the same, on the same level as, Will, as a Will Austin? I see two different kinds of wrestlers there. I see Will Austin. Very good answer a high flyer, an aerial tactician. Uh, I see Jake St. Patrick as a pure tactical wrestler with great grappling skills. You know, Jake, if you notice, doesn't leave the ground too much, which is odd for a guy his size. You know, mm -hmm. the little guys tend to fly a little bit more. Jake's been more of a grounded wrestler, but he has perfected the art of grounding. He's very much like a Chris Benoit when Benoit was at the height of his day, Benoit had maybe one or two, you know, the flying head, butt, and, you know, but he didn't do much off the ropes. He didn't do a whole lot in the air, but Benoit got a hold of you on the mat. He got a hold of you in the center of the ring. He could put a submission hold on you. He could throw any number of moves and any variation of those moves at you at any time and take advantage of your own weaknesses. Jake St. Patrick is that type of wrestler. He goes out there and he finds out what your weakness is and he uses it to his advantage. His speed, his quickness, his agility, and his ability to land a punch or a kick on the money every time. So we're talking about two different styles of wrestlers. So if you're asking me if I'm comparing one or the other, that's like apples and oranges. And if you would pay attention to wrestling, you know, the guy on the podcast who's supposed to be a wrestling expert, if you paid more attention to wrestlers, you would understand that and understand why that was just a stupid question too. Cause we're talking about two different types of wrestlers here. All right. So you, wow. Thank you. Um, so you've named two hey, wrestlers. He, he, called me a, he called me a wrestling expert though. So that, I said, I was, supposedly, supposed, supposedly, supposedly. Going, he's giving me a lot resume. of credit there. Giving it's going on my resume. Obviously <laughs> you're not. It's, I'm, it's going on my resume. The Magnus one told me that I'm a wrestling expert. So, all right. So, hold on, okay. hold on. So, you Cody named Rose, two. You've named two. You named Will Austin and you named J.C. Patrick. Give me three guys that you have not mentioned that are on the up and up that we should look out for in CCW. My number one guy, and as much as I love Will Austin, I can't think about indie wrestling i can't think about professional wrestling without this one and believe me when i tell you he's at the top of the list jackal stevens the jackal yep. chris is a huge fan yes in right. my mind there's no one better out there and i think as time goes on and he evolves even more you're gonna see 
an unstoppable competitor. You know, granted, he's batshit crazy. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, I've never seen anybody in the middle of the ring hump a championship belt before. <laughs> Definitely a little unorthodox. Uh, his music, which I don't even know what the music was this last weekend. Uh, Dan Evans and myself thought it was like a Hasidic thing. Um, I didn't think he was Jewish. I still don't <laughs> think he is. I was a little confused. Um, so, you know, what makes Jackal so great is that he is completely unorthodox. He has no style, yet he is on point. He is another one who just sees a weakness, smells blood in the water, attack, attack, attack. And if you can somehow turn the tables on him and you might think you've got him beaten out of nowhere, he just springs back to life and brings it right back to you in the most unorthodox fashion you've ever seen. He's completely unpredictable. He's like a rabid animal. He's unpredictable. He's dangerous, but he's crisp and clean. His target is always right in the center. He never misses. And I think as time goes on, you're going to see Jackal evolve into what could probably be one of the greatest independent wrestlers of all time. So there's number one. The second one, you know, I've got issues with him. We've gone down the road a couple of times. I'm sure we're going to have to meet again. Our, our problems haven't been resolved, but it would be agony, the maker of nightmares. You know, there are very few big men in this business that can do the types of things that agony can do. You know, Agony walks the top turnbuckle. He's a high flyer for a guy who stands 6'4", pushing 280, 290 pounds on a good day. You know, it's the combination of his power and his athletic agility that make him so dangerous. And every time I have met him in the ring, I have had to be very careful because I never knew at any moment whether he was going to come at me from the ground or come at me from the sky. It makes it very hard to come up with a plan of attack. And he's just relentless. You see him get knocked down. He sits right back up again. I have hit that man. Actually, I don't even know if I should call him a man. I don't really know what he is. But I have hit him with everything in my arsenal and seen him stand up again and come right back at me for more. His, his demeanor, his personality, if that's what you want to call it, and his ability to destroy opponents, in my mind, absolutely, he belongs on that list of three. So there's number two for you. The third man, the final man in this card that I feel is, is probably the most up-and-coming guy right now, and um, I'm going to throw this out there, and it's going to shock a lot of people. Alex Ocean. And not for the reasons that you think. Yes, Alex has made an incredible name for himself in the deathmatch world. He, and in that world, he's done things that believe me. You know, I come from a time, you know, Las Vegas back in the day, we were barroom brawlers, loved a good fight. I've been in real barroom brawls. So I know the kind of pain that Alex Ocean puts himself through in those death matches. I know the kind of resilience you have to have to survive those, the, the, the glass, the nails, the tacks, the, the tables, the, 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 the everything. I don't even know what the hell they're using these days. Christ, I, I saw him with some syringes stuck in him at one point. Yes. You know, he's insane. That in itself is amazing. But what a lot of people don't know and what a lot of people don't understand, Alex knows how to fight. He knows how to wrestle. When you take away the death match and you put Alex Ocean in a straight wrestling match in the ring, he's incredible. He has an unlimited arsenal of moves. He has a quickness and an agility that you don't often see, and he's a smart tactician. Alex goes into every match with a plan, and he knows how to adjust that plan if it's not working out for him. He knows how to change it to get the advantage back in his corner. And when I talk about his moveset, I mean, he's got everything. I've seen Alex use the ropes to his advantage. A little bit of flying. He's not a high, high flyer, but he can fly if he needs to. I've seen him grapple, grab a submission hold. I've also seen this from behind reverse back elbow. I've been up close and personal doing commentary in the ring and seen how devastating 
that reverse back elbow is that he hits you with when he comes down on you. Um, you know, he's another one of these guys who is definitely underappreciated in the conventional wrestling world. In the deathmatch world, he's now a god, a king, whatever they call him. I don't know. I know he's got a legion of sycophants following him around, and they're all – I think you're probably one of them, Chris. Chris is leading look the like, charge. <laughs> you look like one of those morons that likes to get drunk at a bar and have, watch people break glass over their heads because you're too much of a punk to do it yourself. So – I've asked him to show me how to put skewers on my head. <laughs> well, if you ask him nicely, he'll probably stick one in your head. <laughs> if I do for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're stupid enough to want to have that done to yourself, okay, that's on you. But, but you made mention. Rate. But you, you made mention to him what 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 I appreciate him coming from a fan or an expert, as you called me. Um, you you can need watch to stop him. saying that before you have to pay me. <laughs> uh, is you can watch him do a, a death match on a Friday night and then watch him do a rest, a regular conventional wrestling match on Saturday. And I think you, that is very, you don't see that in the, in the wrestling world now. You don't. And especially after the level of punishment he would take on that Friday night. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, a lot of fans have never really met Alex up close. Um, but if you take a look at his body, oh. you know, he's riddled with scars and riddled with pain. You know, those death matches take a lot out of you. You know, he's, you know, I, if you've ever seen one, you understand. Most people would have to go to the hospital for two weeks after uh, those kind of matches. Ocean gets up, wipes the blood. Oh, well, first he takes a selfie of himself because he posts them on Instagram constantly. <laughs> takes a selfie of himself, then wipes the blood off, gets in his car and then drives eight hours to a standard wrestling show somewhere halfway across the country, gets in the ring and takes punishment the very next night. Yep. For that alone, he has my respect. For that alone, he has my admiration. And so he is number three on the list that you have asked me for. Wow. You understand wow. that you understand that this list of three people, I'm not on a list. I am above lists. Yes, sir. We can agree on this, correct? You're on a list on all on its own. A magnificent list. <laughs> that but, you are, but, sir. Chris, let me hear you say it. A you're magnificent ma list. You're on a ma magnificent list. Good boy. So, you are hands down one of the best guys on the Indies right now. What is the next major move for Johnny Walker? I feel like I feel like I just need to take over everything. You know, this whole knockout situation has given me a little taste of control, a little taste of power. I hate promoters. They're all dirtbag scumballs. Carnies. I hate it. Well, you're a carny. Look at you. Chris, you should be running the tilt a wheel. All right. You're, you're either, listen, you're either Graviton. the guy who's running the little Gra fishing pole that you pull the duckies out and the kids get, you know, a little thing, or you're the guy running the tilt a wheel who's like a pervert. Okay. One of those two. I haven't decided yet. I, I, pr I prefer Gravitron. Of course, you want people throwing up on you. I figured you'd enjoy that. <laughs> at any rate, I hate promoters. They're all dirtbag scumballs. If they disagree with me, they can book me. I'll beat their asses, too. I'm feeling like, you know, the magnificent mayhem needs to start taking over other promotions. Once I get done totally dominating knockout, I'm starting to feel like maybe Coastal Championship Wrestling needs some new leadership. Maybe, maybe it's time for me to bring the rest of my crew, the mayhem. And I've got a few surprise people that are a part of the mayhem that nobody knows about. Start bringing the whole crew together. Maybe it's time to take over CCW. OCW is also in my sights, too. There's a program that is in such desperate need of true leadership. You know, Jose, Lucinda, whatever the hell it is, he's got two first names. One of them's a girl. He doesn't know. I don't know. Whatever. I think his <laughs> wife actually runs the business. He just stands around looking pretty. You know, I, he's, he's the prettiest man I've ever seen, for God's sakes. Put a dress on him. I'd have taken him to the prom. You know, I think his, his wife runs the company. She's got the balls in the family and definitely the brains. But at any rate, I feel like OCW, it needs a little change in leadership, too. And there's several other promotions out there. And I think in my mind, I've got this idea of consolidating all these companies under one magnificent leader. And I feel like that's going to be the future of, of Florida professional independent wrestling. The magnificent mayhem. Wow. Oh. I can see it now. It's got a ring to it. 
That's a lot of interviews for us, Chris. Are we allowed in sight? Johnny Walker, are we allowed in? Are, are we allowed in your it, magnificent it, it, circle? In where? What do you want? What are you trying to get now? What do you want from uh, me? If, when you take over all these companies, I want to make sure we have access to, you know, people to talk to in interviews here. This is what we, this is what we live off of. I'll only me. About it. Only me because I'm magnificent, as well, just as, as well as Johnny. You know, but you listen, I'm going to tell you, yeah, you know what? Get a new co-host. Then we'll talk. I'm That's trying it. to get rid of him. I'm trying to get rid of him. I'm no, not he's talking, talking to, to you, me. jackass. <laughs> I'm talking to the other jackass. You see, I told him, take his shirt off. He did. I told you, take the hat off. You left it on. You know why? Because you're bald and you're embarrassed to yourself. And you should be. Because not only are you bald, but you're ugly. And you're confused. You're not real sure. Are you a redneck? Are you a Miami guy? I don't know. You have issues. The check came out of my pocket, so I have to make sure I oblige here. I don't want to, you know, have to. This is a lot of money I spent. <laughs> but your co-host is that. embarrassing you. Your co-host is a jackass. Oh, thank you. you. Know? That's the nicest thing anyone said to me. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> You know, your girlfriend being your left hand, I'm pretty sure she doesn't say nice things to you either. No, she doesn't. Well, switch to the right hand. You might get better reception. <laughs> and Johnny appreciation. Walker. Chris, be nice to our guests. Johnny Walker, I must thank you so much for coming on tonight. I, I This has been absolutely amazing. I know your time is very valuable. I paid for a certain amount. Um, and I just want to make sure that. And you made me there. wait. You made me wait. You, wait. you told I, me nine o'clock. I said nine, nine to nine fifteen, told... sir. Huh? I I, I even checked the message. I said nine to nine fifteen. I see, saw now, nine. Now well, I'm num now I'm number one on on his list now. So shit. <laughs> no, no, it's it's still him because you're still wearing that hat, man. Until you <laughs> until you burn that hat, you're you're not on a list. You're you're like in the garbage. I'm on my own list, just like you. Yeah, Jacob's but list. mine's magnificent. <laughs> Yours is toilet paper. <laughs> Johnny Walker, thank you so much for joining us inside the Paradox tonight, my friend. And uh, when you take over all the indie companies and you make this magnificent bubble of indie wrestling, we hope to be a part of it one day. And uh, we hope to stay on your good side, sir. And I'll make sure you never, ever see that hat at any show that you're at. I better not. And remember, yeah, you can do the interviews as long as all the check's clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Johnny Walker, thank you so much for joining in tonight. Uh, Chris, it's glad to have you back, man. I appreciate you, brother. I love you, man. And uh, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Johnny Walker. And we will see you soon. Yep. Goodbye. Goodbye.